This is Dharma Drops with your host, Rebecca Warfield. This podcast is a little bit about yoga, a little bit about life, and a little bit about whatever. And just as a warning, this podcast is unscripted, so that means I might regret a few things that I say. But hey, maybe I'll say some pretty awesome stuff too. Remember, these are musings, not truths. Buckle up, giddy up, because here we go. Hump Day, Dharma Drops listeners. It's me, your host of Dharma Drops podcast, Rebecca Warfield, and I am here with your Dharma mini drop episode for Wednesday, May 6th. Now, I'm recording this on May 5th because right now I'm working about eight hours ahead of schedule, which is not amazing, but I'm doing the best I can. It's Cinco de Mayo, and I'm not going to lie, yesterday I had to take a little work break to go buy some tequila for my margaritas. So with that said, I hope everyone's feeling well and had a great Cinco de Mayo and is now ready to rock with today's Dharma mini drop episode. So today's going to be a little bit different than normal. I do have the regular updates and a regular mini drop episode, but at the end of this episode, there is a 30 minute audio yoga class. It is a class that is extracted. So the audio that is, is extracted from one of the classes that is available on the Dharma drops virtual on demand studio. So you can listen to it and take the class, or if you'd rather just take the actual class itself, you can access that class for free for seven days and all of the other classes in the Dharma Drops virtual studio for seven days free just by going to dharmadropspodcast.com and registering. So maybe audio yoga isn't your thing. That's cool. The class is there for you on the podcast here in the audio version or on the virtual on-demand studio Either way, it is yours to enjoy. So we'll get to that in a little bit, but let's just do the regular old Dharma mini drop business, which starts with updates. Oh, so for those of you who might be tuning in for the first time, hey, how's it going? I'm Rebecca, and I like to start the mini drop with some updates, and then I get into all my ramblings, and then we peace out and have a great time. On Wednesdays is the mini drop episode, which is a short version of the podcast, usually just with me, and then every other Friday is a full-length episode that has a guest. So today, you're stuck with me, but we're going to have a good time. I swear. I promise. Okay. So some updates for Dharma Drops. Right now, I am offering 20% off the entire shop through Mother's Day. So everything in the shop is 20% off. That includes all of the yoga props, bolsters, blankets, blocks, crystal eye pillows, you name it, oracle cards. It's all on there. It's all 20% off. You don't even need a fancy code the 20% comes off your entire order at the end of your purchase. So when you're checking out, it'll take the 20% off and you are on your way. So you can go to dharmadropspodcast.com, click shop, and you can browse all the goods there and get 20% off through Mother's Day, which is this Sunday. Just keep in mind that some of the shipping times might be a little bit delayed due to the COVID-19 crisis, but even if they're delayed, I promise you they will be on the way. So again, dharmadropspodcast.com, click shop and get 20% off through Mother's Day. Also, don't forget that I am hosting Dharma Drops First at Home Yoga Retreat this Saturday. That's May 9th from 9 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it's a half day virtual at home yoga retreat. And it's a great opportunity for us to hang out together, especially while many of us are still physically and socially distancing from each other. So it's actually $45 to register, but if you sign up by Friday, excuse me, Thursday, May 7th, I'm sorry, Thursday, May 7th, you can save five bucks. So it's a $40 investment for a half day of really good time building community with each other. That includes yoga classes, meditations, journaling, and more. So I hope to see you there. You can register at dharmadropspodcast.com. Just click courses and events and you'll see all of the information there for registration. Also on the blog, we are doing Mother's Day celebrations all week long on the blog. So all the posts are related to Mother's Day. And yes, of course, that means for mothers who have given birth to other little humans, but also we're honoring the divine mother within all of us. So even if you aren't a mom, there's an opportunity for you to join in this celebration and to celebrate the mothers in your life. At the time of this recording, there's one article by Holly Adcock, who just had a baby called An Ode to My Badass Body. And a second article is 
already up from Kristen Nice that is Mother Goddess, the superheroine within. So one for the mamas and one for those who want to identify with the Mother Goddess within all of us. So you can check those out at dramadropspodcast.com. Also, don't forget Healing for Healthcare Professionals is available on the On Demand Virtual Studio. This is a free series for all healthcare professionals provided by my friend and former Dharma Drops podcast guest, Angela David. So this, again, it's a free series that's designed to bring some healing and balance into the lives of healthcare professionals while they work through the front lines or on the front lines of the COVID-19 crisis. So if you are a healthcare professional or you know someone who is, just send them that information and you can sign up there and get these classes all for free. Okay, so that's actually it for the updates today. I'm trying to keep them short so that way I can get into the mini drop and your audio yoga class. So it's been a while actually since I put out the Develop Your Home Practice episode. That was a mini drop that I put out right at the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic. But what I'd like to do today is bring in part two of Develop your home yoga practice because I think most of us, now that we're what, into the second month of this, or at least moving into the second month of it, our home practice is changing. And I think in the beginning, a lot of us were just doing, you know, online classes and doing live stream and just feeling really grateful that we had the opportunity. But the longer we're doing this, the more complicated it's become. In fact, I ran into a yoga student at Trader Joe's. We were waiting in line six feet apart. They have like the sidewalk spray painted, you know. In fact, she didn't recognize me at first and I didn't recognize her because we both had masks on. But eventually when we realized that we were both there, we were chatting and she was saying how, you know, she misses her studio classes because the online experience isn't the same. And she's right. It's not the same. And I think a lot of us are feeling like we miss our studio classes, but unfortunately we are not there yet, at least in North Carolina and most states, we are not there yet where we are allowed to practice in our studios and with our communities. So I think it's an important time to revisit this topic of developing our home practice and staying committed to it. So I have a few thoughts that I'll share with you um, before the audio class that you can enjoy at home. So one of the things that I think happens when we start in our home yoga practice. In the beginning, we're looking for online classes and yoga teachers to guide us. And I mean, of course, we're doing this all the time, even in our regular studio classes. We go to teachers because they have a wealth of knowledge. But one of the things that happens in the home yoga practice, if we stay committed to the home yoga practice, is we really begin to reveal that we are our own best teachers. There are fantastic teachers on the internet. There are fantastic teachers at yoga studios and they have so much to offer. Truly, many yoga teachers are a wealth of knowledge. But when we practice at home, we have to rely on our innate wisdom and we have to trust that innate wisdom. And I think sometimes in the home yoga practice, what happens, we hit this point where we can decide, okay, I'm not doing this anymore. I need someone to tell me what to do, or we have to really trust in ourselves. And I can't speak for anyone else, but for me, that tipping point is when I have to give in to trusting myself. So really, one of the most important things you can do in your home yoga practice is trust your knowledge and trust your wisdom about your body, about your breath, and what you understand and know about the entire experience. And so there are some ways to do this. Number one, keep practicing. Do not stop your home yoga practice. I know that there hits this, like when you hit this point where you're not sure if you want to keep practicing at home, you just really want to go back to your studio. That is the most important time to continue practicing. It's the times when we don't feel like it and when we think we don't need to that are actually the most important times to practice. So number one, you are your best teacher and do not stop practicing. Because when you stop practicing, you stop teaching yourself and you are no longer a student. So keep practicing. And within that space and time that you practice, give yourself the opportunity to learn and explore. I think I talked about this a few episodes ago. Uh, when you're taking online classes, you know, you can hit pause and really explore and take more time to look at postures or experiment with postures. So yes, that is good. But on top of that, give yourself the space 
to not have a teacher. Don't turn on your online classes, maybe just for one day, or maybe before you check in for your online class, give yourself 30 minutes before the class to do your own thing, or 30 minutes after the class to do your own thing. But give yourself the space to really learn and explore. And by this, get on your yoga mat, sit down on that thing, and start doing things. And I know that's really intimidating for a lot of people, but I promise you, there's no right or wrong way to do this. One posture will lead to the next. A child's pose will lead to a tabletop. A tabletop will lead to a down dog. A down dog's gonna lead to a plank. A plank's gonna lead to a vinyasa. A vinyasa's gonna lead to an up dog, and so on. So give yourself the opportunity, even if it's just five minutes, to get on your mat and explore. See what works in the body. Really inquire with what it is that the body needs. One thing too that I actually haven't done in quite some time, but especially early on in my practice, that I I really enjoyed doing that helped me really tap into that teacher within is to take a few minutes to journal about my practice. So after you give yourself the opportunity, five, 10 minutes, whatever it is on your yoga mat, just to roll around and explore and see what happens, write about it. Three sentences. That's all it has to be. I like this. I don't like that. <laughs> you know, I learned this. Just Put it down on paper so that way it becomes this real tangible thing. You got on your mat, you did the practice, and then you put it on paper. So it becomes this real thing that you get to look at and study and explore. You know, when I was teaching English full-time, I often told my students that when we end up saying something, whether it's out into the universe or writing it down, it becomes more real because it's now forever in the world. So when we're on our yoga mats, not that our yoga practice isn't in the world, but we have these sort of fleeting ideas and these fleeting understandings of things. Sometimes they stick and sometimes they don't. But when we say it or when we write it down, now it's solid. It's real. And it's that sort of work that I think allows the home practice to take more shape. We get to learn all sorts of amazing things from our yoga teachers. And in fact, we can do a lot of this work even with the teacher. You're, you are always welcome to journal after a yoga class. But I think it's really impactful when we become our own yoga teacher, we do the our own yoga practice, and then we write about it in a journal. I think that's pretty powerful work. One other thing that I think is important on in this same vein of conversation is to remember that your home yoga practice, it's not a studio yoga practice. So it's not going to look the same. And now just give me a second here to explain myself. So one of the things that, that drives me crazy is that when, <laughs> this is so off topic, but I swear I'm gonna come back around full circle. When someone who's not a vegetarian or someone who's eating, say, a bean burger for the first time says, well, it doesn't taste like a burger. Well, no shit, Sherlock, because it's not a fucking burger. It's a bean burger. They're two different things, right? A burger burger, like from a cow, is not a bean burger, and a bean burger is not a burger burger, <laughs> Right, So they're not going to taste the same. They're two separate things. If we expect them to be the same, we will constantly be disappointed. So if we can just surrender to the bean burger and let it be a bean burger, suddenly it's really delicious. <laughs> I have a point, I swear. So when, our, when we're talking about our yoga practice, it's the same concept. A studio class is not your home yoga practice. And if we expect it to be the, the same thing, we will be sorely disappointed because they are not the same. They are two separate things. So if you are practicing at home, this is a really good opportunity to just practice letting go. It is not your studio practice. It is something else. So let it be something else. It does not have to look the same. It does not have to feel the same. You don't have to do the same things. It doesn't have to be the same time. It doesn't have to be the same sequence. You don't have to wear the same things. You can do whatever you want. And you'll figure out with time what it is that you like in your home yoga practice. And I have a suspicion it's going to be pretty different than what your studio practice is because your studio practice is the burger burger. Your home practice is the bean burger. Sorry for those of you out there who don't eat meat and you hate this conversation, but you get, <laughs> you get the point. They are two separate things. So allow them 
to be different and appreciate, try at least to appreciate those differences because we get to learn from both of those experiences. For me, I learned something very, very different in my studio practice than I do my home practice. And I will be honest, my home practice, the learning is often much more powerful. Things arrive in the home yoga practice for me that I don't even know where they come from. They're like downloads from the universe into my body. It's very weird. Uh, but they're much more powerful very often. Now that's not to say I don't take things that I've learned from a studio class into my home yoga home yoga practice. I sure do. It's just something different. So just let them be something different. Okay, so so far, you are your best teacher. Remember, you you truly do know everything that you need to know within. So give yourself the time and space on your yoga mat to let that reveal itself. And don't expect your home yoga practice to be a studio practice. And I guess as a side note to that, just to add on, even the online classes with your home studios that you might be taking, they're not the same thing either. <laughs> Let them be something else. So I guess to add to that conversation, you got the Burger Burger, which is a studio class. You got the Bean Burger, which is your home practice. And then I don't even know what other type of burger there is out there. Oh, let's say a lentil burger. No, that's still a bean burger. A jackfruit burger. <laughs> <laughs> is the online class experience. That too is something different. So let all three of those things be whatever they will. Okay, side note about jackfruit. I've actually never had a jackfruit burger, but jackfruit tacos are the bomb. They're so good. If you have not made jackfruit tacos, you should. Look, I'm not vegan. I'm not vegetarian. I'm none of it. I just eat food. Whatever my body needs, I eat. But a jackfruit taco will rock my world. So how that fits into your home practice, I don't know, but eat a jackfruit taco. The home yoga practice, I believe, is an expansive opportunity. I've mentioned before, our teachers know so much, but they too are limited human beings, just like you, just like me, just like everyone in the world. And when I do believe in studying with teachers and spending a lot of time with them and learning from them, but when they reach their limit as a teacher, we often reach our limit as a student. But when we commit to the home yoga practice, we are no longer limited. We might be a little bit limited by our own experiences, but we have a whole world that we get to bring into that practice through other online teachers, through our own explorations, through journaling, through reading books, whatever it is that inspires you in your practice, you can bring that into your home yoga practice and it becomes limitlessly expansive and you get to break free into your own unique practice, whatever that looks like for you. And again, I'm not dogging your teachers because I mean, I am a yoga teacher and I'm a limited yoga teacher, just like every other yoga teacher in this world. So it's not that I'm saying we shouldn't study with teachers, but I am suggesting that when we move into our home yoga practice our, our work, our understanding of it all, and whatever that means, I, I don't even know how to put language to that. The things that reveal themselves on our yoga mats become a little bit more expansive when we allow all of our experiences to come into play rather than letting someone else dictate the yoga experience for us. So it's really a beautiful thing. And I hope that in these moments when you decide like, oh, I just, I don't like this home yoga practice bullshit. I don't want to do it. It's not the same. If we can shift the perspective, I truly hope that you experience that expansiveness that happens on the yoga mat. Okay. Last thing that I want to note before we get into the audio class, the big secret to the home yoga practice, the number one thing that will change everything, you have to keep doing it. <laughs> it's as simple as that. You just have to keep doing it. There are times when, I, for me, the home yoga practice, I'm like, God damn it, I don't wanna do this right now. I just wanna be around people. That's when you gotta get on your mat. And there are days when I don't feel like practicing that's when you've got to get on your mat. You just have to keep doing it and stay committed to the practice. It might not ever replace your studio practice, but it will become its own thing. It will become your home practice. 
And I'm a huge advocate of the home practice. I love home yoga, but I do understand it's not necessarily everyone's cup of tea. But I do believe, like anything else, because the yoga teachings remind us of this, practice and all is coming. Do it and things will begin to reveal themselves. So I'm actually pretty excited for you and your home yoga practice. So just keep practicing five minutes, 10 minutes, three minutes. It doesn't have to be a 16 minute class. It doesn't have to be a 90 minute class. Just get on your mat and do something at home, especially while we wait out the coronavirus. So just a quick recap before we get into the audio class. I'm trying to honor your time here for the mini drop episode. The the audio class is 30 minutes, so this will be a longer one. So I'm trying to move quickly here. I'm sorry if I'm going too fast. Number one, you are your best teacher. Explore, journal, listen to what your body needs. Just get on your mat and become the teacher and the student in the same space in the same time. Remember, your home yoga practice is not your studio practice, so liberate yourself from that and allow your home practice to just be your home practice and allow your online practice to just be your online practice. This is an expansive opportunity, so allow your whole life to become part of the practice and appreciate that we aren't limited in this moment. And keep showing up on your yoga mat. Those are my four tips for you right now to develop your home yoga practice. And as we continue to navigate the coronavirus pandemic, I hope to keep providing you some more opportunities and more tips to think about your home practice. But in the spirit of home practice, let's practice. So the following audio class is from the Dharma Drops On Demand studio. As I mentioned in the beginning of the episode, you can either listen to the audio class and take it here with the podcast, or you can head over to dharmadropspodcast.com and sign up for the seven-day free trial, and you can get this class and all of the others unlimited for seven days. So I hope you enjoy this class. And I can't wait to see you in the next episode. Okay, friends, let's practice together. Welcome to your yoga practice. My name is Rebecca Warfield, and I will be your guide for today's 30-minute continuous flow class. So during the filming of this class, we are in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. So I'm recording it home, but it's been an opportunity to really think about the way in which we practice yoga In particular, how we can use the yoga practice as a form of connection. Because right now, most of us across the globe are confined to the spaces of our homes. And though we feel physically separated, there are ways in which we can use the yoga practice to feel energetically connected. And as such, that can bring us great joy in knowing that we are never really alone. So in today's class, we'll open with a little bit of oming with the harmonium, because one thing that I really like about the harmonium is that when we use the harmonium to ohm, what we're really doing is getting in tune with the sound of the harmonium. And that means everyone who's taking this class is also in tune with the sound of that harmonium and you. And then we'll move through a 30-ish minute flow that is designed to simply just get us connected with the breath because our breath is really our connection with others. And that's a big concept. Maybe we can talk about that at another time in a Dharma talk or something, but something for you to keep in mind as you move and breathe today is that you and everyone else taking this class are moving and breathing together. So without further ado, let's go ahead and sit up nice and tall and close the eyes and take a full breath in and let it go again breathe in and let it go and again breathe in sigh it out
there already. Bring the palms to touch at the center of the chest. Namaste. And you can open the eyes and lift the gaze. And while I move the harmonium out of the way, you can come straight into downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Shvanasana. Now go ahead and take the feet nice and wide. Take the hands nice and wide. Take any movement that you need here. Pedal through the right knee, maybe. Pedal through the left knee. And then find stillness. Bring the feet closer together. And the hands up about shoulder width apart. And inhale, come forward, plank pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, come forward, plank pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. And inhale, come forward, plank pose. And exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, bend the knees and look between hands. On bottom of exhale, walk your feet to the top of your mat. If you can't get your feet there, bring your feet halfway up, your hands halfway back. Feet are wide, grab opposite elbows and sway side to side. So in the spirit of connection and finding this joy, with connection. We'll take some bigger movements together. Even if we're doing these at different times, the fact that we are finding the same rhythm of breath together, the same movement together at any time, any space, it does connect us. So we'll take these circles a little bigger. I'm going to turn to face the camera so you can see. And inhale, lift all the way up to the right. And exhale to the left and down. Inhale to the right and up. Exhale to the left and down. Inhale, right and up. And exhale, left and down. Switch sides. Inhale, left and up. Exhale, right and down. Inhale, left and up. Exhale, right and down. And inhale, left and up. And exhale, right and down. Release the arms, sway side to side. And then if you're not there, come to the top of your mat. <clears throat> Pardon me. Inhale, lift and lengthen, look forward. Exhale, fold. Again, inhale, lift and lengthen. Draw outer hips toward each other. Fronts of armpits move forward. Exhale, fold. Last time, inhale, lift and lengthen. And exhale, fold. Soften knees, let arms and head be heavy. Inhale, roll all the way up to stand. Tadasana. <clears throat> Mountain pose, sorry. It's high pollen season here, so <clears throat> I'm clearing my throat and sniffling. I'm sorry. Inhale, arms reach high, palms touch. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift and lengthen, look forward. Exhale, right foot back to a lunge, back knee down. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands down, step back, downward facing dog. Inhale, come forward, plank pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, come forward, plank pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. Again, inhale, come forward, plank pose. And exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg floats high. Exhale, knee to nose and touch. Step right foot next to right thumb, left knee down. Inhale, rise, continuous breath and flow. Exhale, hands down, tuck toes, lift back knee. Inhale, exhale, step forward, fold into legs. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise, arms reach high, palms touch. Exhale, release, arms stand tall, Tadasana Mountain Pose. Inhale, arms reach high. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen, look forward. Exhale, left foot back to a lunge, lower to the left knee. Inhale, continuous breath and flow up. Exhale, hands down, tuck toes, step back, down dog. Inhale, way forward, plank pose. 
Exhale, downward facing. Inhale, come forward, plank pose. Exhale, down dog. Last time, inhale, come forward, plank pose. Exhale, down dog. <clears throat> inhale, left leg high. Exhale, knee to nose and touch. Step left foot next to left thumb, lower down. Inhale, full breath, reach you through all the way to the peak of the posture. Exhale, hands down, tuck toes, lift back knee. Inhale, exhale, step forward, fold into legs. Inhale, lift and lengthen, Ardha Uttanasana. And exhale, fold. Inhale, rise, arms reach high, palms touch. Exhale, release, arms stand tall, Tadasana, mountain pose. Keep moving. Inhale, arms reach high. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, step the right foot back to a lunge, lower to the back knee. Inhale, lift the torso and arms high. Interlace the fingers, flip the palms to face the sky. Inhale. Exhale, up and over to the left. Root down through that front foot. Inhale to the center. Exhale, hands down, step back, downward facing dog. Inhale, come forward, plank pose. Option to lower to the knees. Everybody bend elbows, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg floats high. Exhale, knee to nose and touch. Step right foot next to right thumb, lower the back knee down. Inhale, rise, arms reach high. Interlace the fingers, flip the palms to face the sky. Inhale, exhale, up and over to the right. Inhale to center. Exhale, hands down, tuck toes, lift the knee. Inhale, exhale, step forward, fold into legs. Inhale, lift and lengthen, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise, arms reach high, palms touch. Exhale, release arms and stand tall, Tadasana, mountain pose. Inhale, arms reach high, full breath to the top. Exhale, full breath out to the bottom. Inhale, lengthen, look forward. Exhale, left foot back to a lunge, lower to the back knee. Inhale, lift the torso and arms high. Interlace the fingers, slip the palms to face the sky. Inhale, exhale, up and over to the right. Inhale to center. Exhale, hands down, tuck toes, step back, down dog. Inhale, come forward, plank pose. Exhale, bend elbows, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, knee to nose and touch. Step left foot next to left thumb. Inhale, up you go. Interlace flink fingers, flip palms to face the sky. Inhale. Exhale, up and over to the left. Inhale to center. Exhale, hands down, tuck toes, lift the knee, breathe in. Exhale, step forward, fold into legs. Inhale, lift and lengthen, look forward, and exhale, fold. Inhale, rise, arms reach high, palms touch. Exhale, release arms, stand tall, Tadasana, mountain pose. Close the eyes, bring the hands back to the heart. Check in with the breath. Release the arms. Inhale, arms reach high, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift and lengthen, look forward. Exhale, plant your palms, step or shoot back, Chaturanga. You can skip the vinyasa and come straight to down dog if you prefer. Breathe in. As you're ready, make your way back to down dog. Breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out, big breath in, really feel the breath move through the body, and a big breath out. Inhale, lift heels, bend knees, and look between hands on bottom of exhale, walk step or light float to top of mat. Inhale, lengthen, look forward, exhale, fold. Inhale, rise, arms reach high, palms touch. Exhale, release arms, stand tall, Tadasana, mountain pose. Inhale, bend knees, drop seat chair pose, Utkatasana. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. 
Inhale, lift and lengthen, look forward. Exhale, listen carefully, step your left foot back to a lunge. Spiral the back heel down like warrior two feet. Lead with the left arm, inhale, rise, warrior two. Straighten right leg, inhale, hips back. Exhale, fingers forward and down, triangle pose. Continuous breath, inhale, rise. Exhale, bend the front knee. Inhale, reach forward and flip the palm. Exhale, lifts you up and back, stay deep in that front knee. Inhale, cartwheel the arms down. Unplug back heel. Exhale, step back, vinyasa or down dog, your choice. And we'll meet in down dog, take a big breath in. And a full breath out. Again, inhale. And exhale. Inhale, left leg floats high. Exhale, knee to nose and touch. Step the left foot next to left thumb. Inhale. Exhale, spiral the back heel down. Cartwheel up, warrior two. A different route to get there. We go with the flow here, even when your yoga teacher makes a mistake. Inhale, straighten the left leg. Exhale, hips back, fingers forward and down. Triangle pose. Inhale, rise, come all the way up. Exhale, bend front knee. Inhale, reach forward, flip palm. Exhale, lift you up and back, reverse your warrior. Inhale, cartwheel the arms down. Exhale, vinyasa or down dog, your choice. So we practice together, we breathe together, we make mistakes together. If you've come back to down dog, stay here for a few moments and breathe. Downward facing dog, inhale, lift heels, bend knees, and look between hands. On bottom of exhale, walk your feet about halfway up your mat, and then lower down to the knees. We'll cross the ankles underneath of your bottom, roll back, come to a seat. Scoot forward on your mat so that you can lie down. We'll come into a few waving bridge options here. So you can follow along on the first one. We'll press into the feet, and then before you do anything else, we'll use the hands to measure to make sure that the feet aren't too close to the sitting bones. So about an inch between the heels and the fingertips. Lift the hip points away from tops of thighs. Inhale, lift the pelvis, low back, mid back, and upper. Arms reach overhead. As one unit, exhale, lower everything down. Inhale, lift everything up. Exhale, lower everything down. Again, inhale, lift everything up. Exhale, lower everything down. And from here, we'll lift up again, but this time we won't take the arms overhead. Inhale, lift the pelvis, low back, mid back, and upper. Robot the arms so the fingertips are facing the sky and use that to squeegee the arms underneath of the shoulders and you can stay here and breathe. So then even in the moments where we find stillness, can we find continuous, continuous flow of the breath? Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower down. Let the knees rock side to side. And roll over to your belly. And then bring the hands along the sides of body, palms face the sky. Press into tops of feet, tops of thighs, and pubic bone. Inhale, lifts you up, locust pose. Exhale, lowers down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. And exhale down. Take one cheek to the mat, let the hips face side to side. Okay, you can stay there, or if you prefer, you can bend the knees, reach back and find the feet, and we'll do a little waving movement in Dhanurasana or Locust, whatever you prefer. 
If you have the feet, press the feet into the hands. Inhale, little baby bow pose. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Last time. Inhale up. And exhale down. Release. Let your head go to the other side. Give a little sway of the hips. And then bring the hands underneath the shoulders, tuck the toes. Option to press up through plank pose or through bent knees, your choice. Inhale, exhale, rise. Downward facing dog. And lower to the knees and we'll come to a seat. And if you know that you like to elevate the pelvis, go ahead and grab a blanket. And we'll place the blanket down so the knee edge is facing forward. And then we will sit down on that blanket or a pillow, couch cushion, whatever you have. And we make sure that the pelvis is tilting forward. So to do this, you scoot forward onto the prop, not so that you're falling off, but that you can feel the pelvis tilt. And then bring the hands next to the sides of the body. Inhale, sit tall. Exhale, walk the hands forward. Use a strap, hold on to your feet. You can bend the knees, your choice. But we'll take a few waves through the spine. Inhale, wave through the spine. Exhale, soften. Inhale, wave. Exhale, soften. Inhale, waves you up. Exhale, soften. Inhale, up. And exhale, soften. You can take a few more waves like that, or you can fold in as we're closing out our really quick practice together. <laughs> and inhale, rise. Come all the way up. Take your right hand underneath of the right leg and use it to draw the knee into the chest. And then we'll keep the right leg tucked into the body just as is. Sometimes for twists, we cross the right leg over the left, but for today, we'll keep it like this. Bring your right hand behind the body. Inhale, left arm reaches high. Exhale, up and over to the right. Hug the knee. And inhale, stand tall through sides of body. Exhale, twist a little deeper and breathe. So again, even in the moments that we find stillness, can you find a flow of the breath? And this gets a little bit tricky in twists because the belly is sort of scrunched in on itself and it's harder to find that expansive breath. So we have to work a little differently to find that connection through breath. So see if you can expand the breath through the back of the body. So even in the moments where maybe we are a little stuck, where things are a little complex, we can still regulate the breath to find that connection. Keep your twists, turn your head to face the left shoulder, inhale. And exhale, release. Second sign, right leg goes long, bend the left leg. Bring the left leg behind, the, or excuse me, the left arm behind the body. Inhale, right arm reaches high. Exhale, up and over to the left. You can hug the knee. If you're used to hooking, that's fine. Inhale, stand tall through sides of body. Exhale and twist. Really start to focus on the breath, moving across the back of the body. There's a time and a place for fine alignment and holding postures and seeing the shifts and changes. And there's a time just to notice the breath and to move and breathe. Ideally, through the yoga practice, we become skillful at both.
Turn the head over the right shoulder, inhale. And exhale, release. Straighten the left leg, and then we'll come to uh, offending props if you have them underneath the body. And we'll lie down on the back. Bend the knees into the chest. T or soft cactus the arms. Palms face the sky, inhale. Exhale, let the knees fall to the left, vision to the right. Now I like to take my feet down, scoop my bottom hip to the right a few inches, then bring the knees into the chest again and twist. And so often in these closing shapes, they're relaxing and they kind of feel good. So we start to just zone out and kind of forget the work that we're doing. Can you stay committed to the breath? Can you be so connected to the breath that if someone else is practicing this class anywhere else in the world, you could sync your breath up with them? Inhale, come to center. Scoot your hips to the left a few inches. Be sure to compensate for the amount you shifted on the first side. Knees into chest, and then let the knees fall to the right. Settle into the shape. Fill any space between or under the legs with a blanket or a pillow, and then commit to the breath. Come back to center and grab the outer edges of your feet. Happy baby, Ananda Balasana. If the pelvis lifts, I invite you to hold the backs of your thighs. And take a little inhale, rock to the right. Exhale to center. Inhale to the left. Exhale to center. Inhale, rock all the way to the right for the broadness of your back. Exhale to center, inhale to left, exhale to center, one more time each side, inhale right, exhale center, inhale left, exhale center. Hug the knees into the chest, circle the arms around the shins. I like to keep my knees a little wider here, that can feel pretty nice more of a child's pose, a wide knee child's pose shape. Take a big breath in. And exhale, release into Shavasana, your final rest. Take any comfortable variation of Shavasana today. I'll be coming into a classic variation. Legs long, splayed open, arms extend down sides of body, palms face the sky. And together we'll inhale and exhale. Let's connect through the breath two more times. Inhale, exhale, breathe in and let it go. Soften the front of the body into the back body. Feel the support. Let the breath fade into a natural inhalation and exhalation so much that you forget about the breath.
breath back into the body. Namaste.